This is HealthWise Alternatives with Jackie Bell, promoting good health through information and education. Welcome to HealthWise Alternatives. I'm your host, Jackie Bell. Osteoporosis is a condition that most women are prone to as they enter menopausal years, and many of us feel like once we have it, we will always have it. Tonight we are bringing you information about osteoporosis from a perspective of natural medicine that will hopefully encourage you and help you understand what you can do to help yourself deal with it naturally. Tonight we welcome Dr. Donna Jones. Dr. Jones is a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist and a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. She has been in practice in the Boston area for the past 21 years. She lectures on women's health and natural approaches to maintaining health and is certified in homeopathy, which she incorporates in her medical practice. Dr. Jones' unique practice of holistic and traditional medicine has established her as one of the most promising experts in the Boston area. She is currently on staff at the Jordan Hospital in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and sees patients at Pilgrim Shores OBGYN in Midwifery in Duxbury, Massachusetts, or privately for holistic consultations. Welcome, Dr. Jones. Oh, it's good to be here, Jackie. Thanks. We're going to talk about um, osteoporosis and hopefully a holistic approach. Like I said, so many of us are concerned about it and don't want to take medication for it. So let's start out with the medical definitions of osteoporosis mm -hmm. and maybe the different types of os osteoporosis that you see in your practice mostly. Okay. Well, osteoporosis actually means porous bones. You have um, bones in your body, both in the spine and in the hip, um, that are mostly uh, targeted when we're doing studies for osteoporosis. And so when we're talking about osteoporosis, it actually means that you've had a significant amount of bone loss, enough to put you at risk for fracturing your bones. With so many um, women and men, but uh, particularly women, um, who are over the age of 50, um, we find that this is increasingly um, turning out to be a public health issue. Mm -hmm. um, with osteoporosis, there are a number of different reasons why people develop it, and I don't think that we cover all of it in Western medicine. Um, I find that people are diagnosed late or they're not getting their screening early enough or even after they've gotten the diagnosis, many times they're moved right away to medications um, like the bisphosphonates, that would be um, Fosamax, Actinel, uh, Boniva, um, and are not given other alternatives or other ideas on how to, to get healthy or to reverse the osteoporosis. So just um, starting with some of the risk factors that people have, um, one of the things that we find with osteoporosis is that uh, people may not be getting an adequate amount of the building blocks that you need to keep your bones healthy, and that would be a calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Um, one of the things that can impact on this significantly is your diet. Your body tries to maintain a certain pH, 7.45. It's a little bit um, alkaline, so your body tries to stay right there. That's where everything's working well. All the cells are working well. <laughs> the body is happily humming along. And if we are um, changing the pH too much and making our body more acidic, it's possible for you to lose bone mass, and this is how. Um, your body uses calcium for just about everything, so you're using up about 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. Um, the blood tries to keep the pH balanced at 7.45. You need to have uh, calcium is used as a buffer for the blood. So say for example you have somebody who has a diet that has uh, quite a bit of animal products or they're uh, drinking sodas or coffees all the time. These are all foods that can make your body more acidic. And so the body is very smart and it tries to um, buffer that or neutralize it, and it will take calcium from the, the biggest resource that you have in your body, which is your bones. Mm -hmm. If you're adding additional calcium or you're getting calcium in your food, 
you may be able to combat that. So that is one of the reasons why you may be losing bone has to do with your diet and the types of foods that you're eating or not eating. Um, another is um, age. As we get older, we are at higher risk for losing bone. Um, it's important that we talk to our children and we talk to our teenagers about how to build strong bone. And basically the foundation is made there. Oh. By the time you're 35, you've peaked in your bone mass and you're starting to um, backslide a little bit and lose some bone. In women, this can be significant because our bones are smaller than bones in men, as are our muscles. And so when they get to the point of menopause, and this is where the hormonal component of it comes in, um, you may find that you are losing more bone than you're building, and that can lead to osteoporosis. The bone has two types of cells that help to remodel the bone. Um, our bones are constantly being remodeled, one with osteoblast, which builds up bone, and the other with osteoclasts that break down bones. And so, say for example, you had a fracture and your body is trying to heal that bone, you have to have osteoblasts come in and lay down the new bone, and in order for it to not be a rigid structure that isn't a living bone, the osteoclasts have to come in and model that bone. So that's constantly going on, and that balance is upset at the time of menopause when you start to lose estrogen. You may have more osteoclast activity than osteoblast activity. Mm -hmm. And so um, we talked a little bit about um, the, the types of, um, of foods that may be causing it or minerals that you're not getting in, um, losing bone during to men due to menopause, and also talking about um, our physical activity, which can have a big impact on whether you're maintaining bone or not. In women, the bone that's in the spine has most of its um, strength on the outside, and then you have this very delicate network on the inside. And so that's the area where it's going to start to go away first. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine that you have all of your strength on the outside and this whole little honeycomb network has disappeared, then the next thing that will happen is that the bone will collapse on itself. And this is where we find women are having problems with losing height or walking bent over. Um, that all has to do with advanced osteoporosis. Um, the average woman in her 50s is going to lose more bone mass in the spine, and almost 50% of that bone mass loss happens in the first two to three years after menopause. So this is a time when you have to be really aggressive. It's also a time that I think it's important for screening. And the screening is done with a machine called a, um, a bone mineral density machine or a DEXA machine. There are different varieties of it, but basically it's going to show you how dense the bone is. Um, I, I feel strongly that when we're looking at these kinds of studies, we really need to be looking at the a spine, the forearm, and the hip is those are the areas that are going to be most vulnerable. Um, in women in their 50s, again, more likely to be at the spine. The average age of a hip fracture is around 75 in this country, but the significance of that is, is that um, some people will die. There's a very high um, morbidity and mortality rate after fracturing a hip because you have to stay immobile. Oh. for so long. So the complications from that can be devastating for some people. And so um, in, in terms of just talking about preventing osteoporosis. Yeah. What can we do to, you know, especially women in our 40s, uh, I don't know if that's the best time to start or when, when yeah. would you say would be the best time? I really, really... think the best time, uh, if you just are 40 now and you're figuring out that you want to do something about your yeah. bones, but really um, help your daughters to think about a more um, helpful diet. The cigarette smoke um, can impact negatively on bone. Um, poor diet, not getting enough um, fiber in the diet, not getting mineral-rich foods in the diet. Overuse um, of alcohol. Exactly. Kind of All of those uh, cause imbalances in the body that cause you to lose bone. Um, 
preventative wise, I talk to people first about their diet and nutrition. And exercise. A, and exercise, really doing weight bearing exercise. Mm -hmm. um, with some women, they may think that this means that they have to go to a gym and work out with weights, but it also can mean Pilates or yoga. There are a number of different things you can do. I'm really trying to have people be physically active every day. Right. Um, some people swim. What you want to do is to really get a stretch on the bone uh, with the muscle and put some tension on the bone so that um, you will stimulate um, laying down new bone. So then for 40-year-olds who might be diagnosed with a touch of osteopenia or osteoporosis, what would you suggest to help them? I think um, the most important thing is um, first looking at your diet and seeing what things you can change and trying to stay physically active. If you can uh, go and do some weight-bearing exercise three days a week. For example, I do cross-training exercises. So I do Pilates and yoga, but I also do weight training at the gym. And sometimes I'll be a lazy bone and I'll do the elliptical <laughs> or I'll go for a walk outside. That's also a weight bearing exercise for your hips. But I think it's important to do something that you're going to do consistently. In terms of getting in uh, the foods, I don't eat a lot of red meat. At this point in my life, I eat a lot of chicken and fish. I have um, five servings of fruits and vegetables, believe it or not. I've managed to get that in. Um, I do add a kelp into my diet, so I go and actually cut up the kelp and add it to my food. You won't taste it. <laughs> it works out well. I do take calcium and magnesium, but I uh, take it in a liquid form uh, in a... Uh, there's a German company that we use that you can get at the health food store called Floridex, and they have calcium and magnesium in a very absorbable form that's um, vegan that um, people can just um, put into their juice or they can put it into warm water and drink it. Um, we have a lot of people who are sensitive to taking calcium in their diet in a vitamin form. Mm -hmm. There are different levels of absorption with the calcium that's commercially available. Uh, the calcium carbonate, which is what you see in a lot of the preparations, including Rolaids, Tums, um, Viactive, you can look at the labels. Um, the carbonate is absorbed, but it's not absorbed as well as some of the other uh, calciums that are available. Calcium citrate is a very available um, bioavailable form and um, many times we like to see that coupled with vitamin D, magnesium, and boron. And so when you check the labels mm -hmm. of what you're taking at the store, um, just look to see if those ingredients are there. The calcium and the vitamin D are going to be um, key in this case. Most of us don't get enough um, vitamin D exposure. We're avoiding the sun which is one of the ways that your body does um, help you to make your own vitamin D. You can get it in cod liver oil. Um, if you'd like to take that, it contains vitamin A and D. The vitamin D will help you to absorb the calcium. The magnesium, which should be in a two to one ratio of the calcium. So if you're taking 1,000 milligrams of calcium, you wanna take at least um, 400 or 500 of the magnesium will help to keep the calcium in the bone and also keep it um, regulated in your um, system so you're not just spilling calcium out. It's helpful to know all of that. So when people go to the drugstore, there are preparations right at your um, local pharmacy that you can pick up that are well absorbed and utilized by the body. So the sounded like the liquid form would be the most absorbable? The liquid form was my preference primarily because it's a um, it's a herbal preparation. I mean, the uh, calcium and magnesium comes from vegetables and herbs. Right. And so in my book it worked out well and I was also able to get my family to take it without um, trying to hide it in their food. <laughs> 
which I've been known to do. So are, are you talking more about then um, 40 to 50 year old woman and with prevention with um, a good diet and exercise and a little bit of calcium, magnesium supplement. Right. Um, it, would that be true for the woman who has a touch of osteoporosis at that age as well? Yeah. In those women who have osteoporosis, one of the most important things um, that we try to do for them is to um, talk to them about strategies for rebuilding their bone. It is possible to rebuild bone. I do think that you have to be motivated to do a number of things rather than to just take a pill. Right. So we do have patients who come in um, on prescribed medication or have refused to have the medications that are available to them um, uh, commonly, and they asked us for alternatives. In those patients, they, um, they generally are uh, reviewed for their um, diet. We see if they're taking any other supplements, but there are natural ways to build bone. One of them is weight training. If you um, are willing to uh, go to the gym, or even at home with home weights, you can do this and to build um, bone just by exercising. There was an excellent book uh, called Strong Women Stay Young, and Strong Women Stay Slim. She wrote a series of them um, by a Dr. Nelson. And there were a number of uh, things that they did, but they had taken uh, weight training into the nursing homes and they had uh, trained with people who were on walkers in wheelchairs um, to strengthen their muscles. They found that they did have an increase in bone mass as well, but many of those people after the program didn't need to have their um, walkers or wheelchairs anymore. Mm -hmm. So I thought if that can be done in a nursing home, certainly with people who are uh, ambulatory, they should be able to do this. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Right. Um, you can do this for 15 or 20 minutes and three times a week and build new bone along with your diet and exercise. Um, having your vitamin D levels checked would be important. And there are um, certain foods. We can talk about um, foods that you can buy, certain sea vegetables that have high levels of calcium and magnesium in them like dulse, which you can get at the health food store. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a natural preparation of soy isoflavone, um, known as a privavone, also known commercially as ostavone. This is one of the things that was developed in Europe while they were developing by bisphosphonates here. But what it does, it has been proved to increase bone mass by 1% a year. In this country, it can be prescribed as um, Fosteum. It's F-O-S-T-E-U-M. And it is available and can be um, given to you by prescription. But what it does is it actually will increase osteoblast activity and decrease osteoclast activity a little bit. And so um, you will start laying down new bone. One of the other things that helps, there's been a question about um, hormone replacement therapy, but using a natural progesterone cream will also increase bone mass, um, and that can be used easily. You can get that over the counter and use a small amount of that every day as prescribed on the bottle. Those would be um, some of the techniques that we've used um, all together. Is, and what about the women who are trying to get their calcium from milk or dairy products? Well, milk and dairy products will give you a certain amount of um, absorbable calcium. You can get higher levels of calcium if you're eating some green leafy vegetables. So you can make yourself a bone stew, so to yes. speak, with um, kale and collard greens and um, broccoli. Um, different things that you can add to it that already have quite a bit of calcium. When you're eating a yogurt every day, you'll be getting about 300 milligrams. The soy milk gives you 300 um, milligrams of uh, calcium along with the isoflavones. You'll be getting about 30 milligrams, which will allow you to absorb it and utilize it um, in a good way. One of the things about milk, it, 
many times commercially they have added um, vitamin D, but it's a, an irradiated vitamin D2, and vitamin D3 is actually what's going to be more helpful in absorbing the calcium. Uh -huh. And so um, the dairy products work well. There are a number of people who are lactose intolerant that really need to look at alternatives. If you're eating your leafy greens every day and doing your exercise, um, you can get just as much calcium as you might on just limiting yourself to the dairy products. What about with homeopathy? Do you have an approach using homeopathy for osteoporosis? We do have homeopathic remedies that will help with um, preventing osteoporosis. One of them is called CalcFOS. It's C-A-L-C period, um, P-O-S period. You can use it in a 6X dose and you just put the pellets under your tongue every day. If you're using it in a higher dose, like a 10M dose, um, which you can only get prescribed um, from a homeopath, you can take it four times a year mm -hmm. or once a month um, as prescribed by them. And what that does is it does help with the, the calcium and phosphorus in the bone to lay down new bone. But the way that homeopathy works is it's a um, balancing medicine, and so it's also going to help you to utilize whatever calcium you get in your system in a, a much more efficient way. So then, um, just to kind of review, the first thing that you work with when someone comes in is you review their diet and make sure that they're knowledgeable about what foods can strengthen their bones, vegetables, and so forth. Um, and then encourage them with exercise, and then um, using testing. Do you use testing to find out? We do. I actually uh, screen everybody once they finish their periods. Mm -hmm. We screen them for osteoporosis with uh, the bone density. If they have some risk factors before that, say if you have someone who had her ovaries removed or has been on um, steroids for long periods of time, they may be at higher risk for osteoporosis and they'll get screened earlier no matter what their age is. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so if someone has had um, uh, been smoking a lot or using alcohol, they, they should probably be aware to have screening a little bit earlier as well. Yeah, there could be a number of different factors involved in that because both of those are toxic to the ovaries. Um, where you are producing estrogen, so your estrogen gets used up quicker, mm -hmm. so to speak, and you go into menopause earlier, and mm -hmm. that can put them at a higher risk. And what about stress? Good question. Um, the way that I would think about um, stress, again, I would um, track back to the adrenal glands and the thyroid and what their impact is on bone. Um, the adrenal glands are glands that sit right on top of your kidneys that help with your immune response, your fat and glucose metabolism, and your stress response. Um, one of the things that happens is in our society, many of our triggers for stress are mental, emotional, rather than getting away from physical danger. And so that may cause someone to put out extra amounts, high amounts of um, the cortisol that they're producing in their body or the stress hormone. And the stress hormone would cause their body to be more acidic. And in turn, you would start leaching calcium again out of the bone to try and get your body to be less acidic. And so. So many women have calcifications in their breasts. Is that a sign of losing bone density at all? Well, um, the calcifications in the breast may be a little bit different. It could just be trapped milk in the milk ducts from um, having reproduced or lactated at some point in their lives. It also could be um, calcium that's not being absorbed properly. If you have low levels of vitamin D or if you're taking a calcium that's not very well absorbed from the GI tract, it may end up in other places, in soft tissue in fatty tissue, in the kidneys, and forming mm -hmm. kidney stones, um, in the joints causing arthritis, and the muscles causing stiffness. 
So then the proper assimilation of calcium is just as important, important as getting enough. Well, Donna, thank you for being on our show. I think it's been quite revealing to know a little bit more about osteoporosis and more of a holistic approach to yes, it. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much. We've been talking about natural approaches to osteoporosis with our guest, Dr. Donna Jones. Until next time on HealthWise Alternatives, I'm Jackie Bell. This season on HealthWise Alternatives, we will be interviewing holistic medical doctors, practitioners, and counselors who will explain natural medicine approaches to health and disease. HealthWise Alternatives is created by The Woman in You and Take One Films. Check our website, thewomaninyou.info, for scheduling information or contact your local cable access.